all over the wall, but who's seen this poster before? Hands up. All of us, yeah. RAs, we probably never looked at it much, but after today, you're going to remember it. I guarantee you that. And next year, you go, oh, I know that. I oh, know you know that. It's a refresher. So this is the same. The world over in English speaking language, this is the way that it's written. Except for, if you're staying in a hotel or motel, something like that, it wouldn't be R for remove, A for alert, C for confine. This is the word that would change. It wouldn't be E for extinguish. If this was a motel or a hotel somewhere we just stay having, that would be E for evacuate. Exactly. That's the only difference. But in the workplace, in the general arena, that's the way it's written. So in other words, we had a fire, now it's only for a fire. It's not a menu for the kitchen staff. <laughs> All right? It's not a database for the office staff. All right? it's, not a, it's not a maintenance plan for the guys up the back. It's only for fire. So if we had a fire in this room right now, oh look at this. You like my visual effects? Yes. Hey, how good is that? Forty bucks on eBay. Yes, it's a heater as well. Oh, it's not got the heat on there, you just have the light on. So that looks like a fire. So we've got a fire, what are we going to do about it? Don't say turn the switch off. It's a real fire. Okay? Use your imagination. We're going to remove all non-essential personnel from the immediate area. What that basically means is everybody get out of the immediate area. Now the immediate area might be small, it might be like, get away from the fire. You scared of fire? Why? What's dangerous about a fire? Is it the heat? Is it the, is it the um, flames or is it the smoke? Which one? Which one's the most dangerous? Smoke. smoke. Fairly healthy man at the back, 1.7% of your lung capacity filled with smoke, you're gone. Not a lot. That's just normal combustible smoke, it's things like paper and wood. But most things these days are made out of what? Out of plastic. Yep. Okay, even less. So do yourself a favour, trust your instincts. If it smells like smoke, don't go. What's that? <laughs> it probably is smoke. <laughs> Probably is. Walk away and say, aha, there's a fire. Now what am I going to do about it? I'm going to alert the fire brigade. Well, I'm going to wait for the smoke alarm to go off. No, you're not. Even if the smoke alarm has gone off, are you going to ring the fire brigade and say the alarm's gone off? Yes, yes you are. But we've got an automatic fire alarm over here at Preston's. It goes through to the fire brigade. <coughs> doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't it? No. No, doesn't it? No. no. What do you think the fire stations are sitting there with thousands and thousands of people waiting for their alarm to go off? No. We have been very lucky because they have responded, but... Doesn't go to the fire brigade. Your automatic fire alarm goes to your monitoring company. Who are they? I don't know. Does anybody work nice shift in? Okay, 3 a.m. in the morning, very quiet. Okay, fire alarm goes off. Where does that signal go? Not to the fire station. What are the fireys doing down at the fire station in the middle of the night? <laughs> I'm glad nobody said sleeping, it's called reclining. <laughs> Recline, that's in the award. Okay. okay, it goes to a monitoring company and they're sitting in front of a computer. So two things you're not going to trust at 3 a.m. in the morning. Number one, a computer sending a signal to another computer. Who trusts computers completely? Don't do it. Number two, you're not going to trust somebody you've never met, never will meet you at all. The alarm's gone off over there at Preston's. I better ring the fire brigade and tell them. That's how it works. Yes, and you might have been lucky and they've come here and you've said, oh, that's good. They got the signal, though they got it. But say they didn't. So you're not going to worry about that. It's easy for you to get onto the fire brigade. In other words, get onto the emergency <coughs> services. We're using a phone from inside the building. How do we get how do we get onto the emergency services? How many zeros do we dial? Three. We how many? Four. Four. Who said three? That's okay. <laughs> now. At the end of today, you'll go out of here going, oh, I know it's four zeros. But you know what? If your hand's shaking like that at 3 a.m. in the morning, your mind's going like, if you dial three zeros, diddly squat. You know what diddly squat means? They ain't going to put you on yet. So four zeros from a landline. You with me? If you're home landline, who's got a landline at home? Waste of money, but we've got it by now. It's three zeros. Emergency services, can I help you? So how did you say we've got a fire and hanging up? The other end, I'll say, who's that? I don't know. Okay. They're not giving me some information. So first thing you say is fire. They'll put you through the fire brigade. Next thing you're going to say is the name of this facility. What's it called? Quickly, quickly. Blooming Hills. Blooming Hills, that'll do. <laughs> that's a good girl. Blooming nice. Hills. Blue Hills. <laughs> what's the address here? Number 25 Village Right, what's a cross street? I don't know. Well, let's get it now. This is what today's about. What's a cross street? Braidwood Which one? Braidwood Road. Braidwood Road. Okay. And your name, sir? Dean. Dean. So Dean's got to give him his name. There you go. That's all the information you've got to give him. So straight away, fire truck, two fire trucks at least, on the road here to Blue Hills. They're on their way. We've got about roughly up to 10 minutes before they get here. 
The next 10 minutes is very important. Now, why would Dean give him his name? So when they get here, it's a burnt toast. They say, thanks for getting us out of bed. Or oh, sorry, thanks for getting us out of refine. No, because he's a reference point. Doesn't mean he's going to get charged for the false alarm if it is a false alarm. And by the way, is the false alarm charged? Yes. How much? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know it's just gone up, so it was 15, so I know it's 17.50. So if you do burn the toast, don't admit to it. <laughs> 750 bucks. Don't worry. Ah, we have our ways. But look, okay, so Dean has seen the fire, he's rung up. And where would Dean more than likely wait for the fire brigade? Where do they go to when they arrive at a building? It's sitting right next to them here. It's a automatic fire alarm panel. Where's that located in your facility? At the front. At the front. The front door. Lobby. Reception. Entrance. Same place in every building. High rise, low rise. That's what you'll hear them. You'll hear eeyore, eeyore. They come on their donkey suit. Eeyore, eeyore. And you hear, oi, 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 oi. They go in the front door. And next to the fire panel, they're looking for what colour light? Red. Red. So easy questions, yeah? And they say, oh yeah, level number one, zone four, there's a fire alarm. How do we get there? Oh, there's a floor plan. Okay, crew, come with me. We go left, right, left, right. Now they'll eventually get up here, but at 3 a.m. in the morning, it's not as easy to get up here. So do you think it'd be a good idea if Dean or Vicky, somebody is there waiting for them, say, I can show you the area, I can tell you how to get the area? Absolutely. So it's a reference point, Plus, it's local knowledge. Whenever we arrive at a job in the fire brigade, we're hoping somebody will meet and greet us and give us the correct information. The last thing we want is a big crowd of people, and that's what usually happens. The police have this more than the fire brigade, where everybody's got a story to tell. I can tell you what happened. I can tell you what happened. No, no, no. Where's Dean? Dean, you made the call, sir. Tell us exactly what happened. Because look, at all the early emergencies in life, fire is one of those that escalate, not in minutes, but in seconds. So the quicker you can get them up here, the quicker you can deal with the emergency. Confined fire and smoke. So we're in this area here. Would it be a good idea? The last person out of the area where there's a door we can close, would you close the door behind you to confine the fire and smoke? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, if Vigenti was still in the room, don't answer that one. <laughs> no. Make sure everybody's out. All right? Nobody gets left behind. How do we know? We've got to search some places. Residence room, Mary, cigarette floor, sets the alarm, going to Mary's room, can't see Mary. Yeah, she's not there, shut the door. How do we know she's not there? Where are some of the places Mary could be hiding in her room? You tell me quickly. Oh. Who said wardrobe? What's the That's the first place. <laughs> Elderly people and young children will jump into a cupboard. First place, why? For an elderly person, they know once they get in there, they've got a bit of protection against the fire and they've got some fresh air. For children, they like the security blanket. So check the, if it's safe enough to do so, check the wardrobe, check. What does that mean? Under the bed, where else in their room? Toilet, bathroom, and also I haven't looked in the rooms here, but most of the newer places I go to, and you've got a newer place, the curtains are usually full length. Check behind the curtain. Even my big bum doesn't stick out. <laughs> It's a big one too. But, but look, check those. Then when you leave, shut the door behind you. Why should we shut the door? Because we're confining the fire and smoke in that room. So when we get to talk about the design of this building, it's unlike a house where every room can multiply into the whole house once it gets into the ceiling, it's different in a place like this. Every room is its own fire compartment. Just by shutting that door, you've bought yourself roughly 15 minutes before the fire and smoke come out of the room. You can put a towel on the bottom. So you've got everybody out, you've saved a life maybe, or maybe not, if there's nobody in there, you've confined the fire and smoke in that room for a minimum, minimum, and they're not fire doors, minimum 15 minutes. 15 minutes, very important. Now, who's, who's due here in about 10 minutes? Fire brigade, might be all you've got to do. Go and investigate, yeah, there's fire, I'm not going to go, yeah, shut the door, that's all you've got to do, fire brigade, get in, yeah. That's it, that's your job done. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, never read that. Nope. Nope, no, they don't like. <laughs> I'm one of them. Did they say four minutes? Nope. Nope. Ten minutes. Within ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to break a few minutes today. Who said four minutes? Well, I, I went to a training once and they did say within four minutes they were out. Never. Where'd you go? Com safe? Rise the trainer? I'd grab that yeah, person. I'd, right. I'd grab that person. I'd slap them around the neck because yeah. you're not allowed to say that. It's the wrong thing. Okay. Yeah. 
Yep, that's what you mentioned right now. Forget about that. <laughs> Wrong message, get it out. <laughs> <laughs> now I go to some places, seriously, and they say, oh, but the fire station's next door. They'll be here in one minute. How do you know they're not out fighting fire somewhere else? Then you've got to go to the next one. The guarantee of service for the New South Wales Fire Brigade is within 11 minutes. Within. Could be one minute, could be four minutes. Okay, but it could be within 11 minutes. Let me tell you something, if you're waiting for an emergency service, 11 minutes seems like forever. So all of this today, the whole two hours today, brings itself down to within 10 minutes. Let's go. Bet you wish you got rid of me in that quick. But that's how, that's how it all happens, because once the fire brigade, hand it over to them. Okay, that's how the guarantee of service. And let's say there was a major bushfire up the road and all the local fire stations were attending that one. They send fire stations from other areas to stand by at your local fire station. So you're not to know what the numbers mean on the side of the truck. So your local fire station here would be Hornsey Park, am I correct? Okay, I know what they're, they're number seven. So if it hasn't got a number seven, it's got a number 32, for example. I can tell you that's Mount Druid. But they're standing by Hornsey Park. And when they get up here to Blue Hills, number one, they've never been here. Number two, the area changes that much, they wouldn't even know how to get here, they will get here, but, and number three, they're hoping that Dean is standing out the front to show them, around, show them around the place. So that's how the fire brigade works. It's a guarantee of service. Has the ambulance got a guarantee of service? No way. If you ring an ambulance, you're guaranteed to be here in 11 minutes? Good luck with that. So why the fire brigade got a guarantee of service? There you go, out of all the services, police, fire brigade, why the fire, who pays for the fire brigade? Don't say government. <laughs> the taxpayers, that's right. We all do. Maybe. How do you, you pay for the, the fire brigade in your taxes, correct? Which tax? Your income tax? Eh, eh. Wrong. That's federal. They're not interested in New South Wales fire brigade. So where does it come from? Okay, hands up those who pay insurance on their cars. Yeah. Fire levies. Hands up those who pay council rates. Fire levies. Hands up those who pay house and contents insurance. Fire levies. So who pays for the fire brigade? You do. They're public servants. Use them. And if you've got the pussycat caught in the tree at home, get the fire brigade out. Are they going to, char are they going to charge you for that? No. No. But does it mean that we have to so. We're on a different wavelength, but I know the wavelength you're on. Well, you know what, Nicole? You could have four female firefighters turn up. They're in trouble, aren't you? Yes. What about, what you're saying is that the company have to pay for the force? Absolutely, they do. That's, a, that's right. And the, and the company can pass it through to the offending person. Yeah. At home, you pay for them, you, if you need them, you use them. The last thing I want you to do is leaving here today thinking, oh, if I had a small fire at home, I'm going to put it out. No, you're not. You've got to call the fire brigade. We just told you how dangerous the fire is. Because we're getting that stage now with the ambulance where people aren't even calling an ambulance because they know that heart attack is going to cost them 300 bucks. It's going to cost them their life, excuse the expression. That's, a, that's right. It hasn't happened in the fire brigade yet. Give them time. It will. It will, but at the moment, you pay for them, use them. So if that pussy cat's caught in the tree, get them out. They'll get the cat out of the tree. And it's not true that they always land on their feet, but that's another story. Okay, not all the time. Here's your cat, quick, get the cat in the tree. Cat and tree. Last one, extinguish your control fire, but not take any unnecessary risks. Not like here to teach you how to be firefighters, but I'm going to show you how to use equipment. Whether you use it or not, I hope you never have to do. But if you do, I tell you what, it's great. A small fire goes to a large fire in seconds. If you can nip it in the butt or get there early, you have prevented a tragedy. We see what happens in nursing homes when there's fires, don't we? Okay, so you've prevented a tragedy. No, we're not going to get any extra money. You've already told them that. I was going to tell them they didn't, but you told them they okay? no. <laughs> But if you can get there, but if you don't feel confident or competent, in other words, it's no good you having a fire and going, Oh, Trevor showed us how to use this extinguisher. I'm going to put the fire out. How do I use it all? There's instructions here. <laughs> Just getting hot. Carry up right to the... Oh, it's getting very hot. Swing. <laughs> yeah, there's instructions. You can read Same as on the um, fire blanket. You can read the instructions. Who wants to read the instructions? You're going to know how to use it when I leave here today. You're going to know we're going to pull the pin. We're going to aim at the base of the fire. I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to step back. We're going to put the fire out. That's it. Simple as that. When you put it out or not, it doesn't matter. You don't go looking for another one and come back. You've done your bit. You've done your bit. That's what today's all about, yeah? Okay, so that's our fire safety awareness message, RACE. And I know you've been listening because if I turn that around, it says R stands for? Oh, 
Well, not one person. <laughs> R stands for. All together now, team. R stands for. Got the bass baritone. Got the what was that second last? Right? A four. C four. E four. Extinguish. Right. That's it. Okay. Think about this. They're the four actions. That's the whole fire emergency. There's nothing else you can do. When the fires get here, if you've done one of those things before, nothing else, you've done your bit. See outside and have a cigarette, watch the place burn down. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's so funny. But. <laughs> look after yourself first, and it's always life before property. So when the fires get here,